receive this, but I, I, I actually receive it on behalf of a whole lot of other people. And uh, one, uh, one of the things I love to do, I love to do it as, uh, in my old roles as a treasurer, congressman, governor, and, and, and I love doing that as I said, I love to go to schools. I love to be in schools, and uh, I love to hold town hall meetings. And I, I like to have town hall meetings in schools, whether they have kids happen to be like in college or universities, or whether they happen to be in high school or middle school. I can do town hall meetings in elementary schools. And we usually start with the fourth grade. And fourth grade in Delaware is when kids learn about the Constitution. And they learn there's three branches of government, and there's a Senate and the House, and, and all that. And when I go into schools, I, I talk a little bit, but then we just open it up for the kids. Kids ask the funniest questions. How many of you have kids? Do the deers still ask funny questions? I, where are the keys? How much money do I have? <laughs> when can I get a credit card? But, uh, um, kids ask funny questions, especially the young ones. And among the questions that uh, they, they ask me, have you ever met Barack Obama? <laughs> I used to work out with him in the gym. Can I touch you? <laughs> um, have you ever been in a White House? Well, my wife and I slept there a couple of nights. Oh my God, what are the bands like? I can't believe it. They ask like, stuff like, uh, do you have, um, do you live in a mansion? Uh, no, not really. Do you have a, a limousine? I drive a 2001 Price of Town Country minivan. Do you have bodyguards? And I point to the interns. <laughs> right over here, they don't look legal, but believe me, they are. Uh, are you married? Are you rich? Um, not really, but my wife sort of is. <laughs> And uh, are you married to a movie star? And I always say, yes, I am. <laughs> and uh, but the question, one of the questions I most uh, uh, like is, uh, this one little girl said to me, what do you do anyway? <laughs> what do you do? And uh, I said, well, do you have rules in your school? She said, yes. I said, do you have rules at home? She said, yes. I said, do you have rules on your school bus? And she said, yes. I said, we have rules for our country. And uh, I get to help make them. We call them laws. And I work with the president and the vice president and others in the Senate and the House. And uh, this one little boy said to me, he said, what do you mo most like about your job? What do you most like about your job? And I said, well, probably two things that I most like about my job. And the first of those is that uh, I get to help people every day. And there are folks who call my offices here in Delaware and down in Washington who've lost their jobs. People who are in danger of losing their homes, they've lost their health care. They have a kid in college who's afraid they're not going to be able to finish. And they need our help. They need our help all kinds of problems every day. And one of the real joys that, uh, that I have in, in serving is that I actually get to help people. We get to help people. It's a source of enormous joy, enormous personal joy for us. The other thing that gives me great satisfaction in what I do is I love getting people to work together. I love getting people to work together. There was a, a survey that was released last week uh, dealing with members of the United States Senate. And the members of the Senate, unbeknownst to me, had voted in a secret ballot Done, or done by some newspaper in Washington about uh, who was particularly partisan, Democrat and Republican, and who was particularly bipartisan. And in the, uh, the survey by my, my colleagues, I was delighted to read, they picked me as the second most bipartisan person in the United States. So I immediately lashed out at Arlen Specter last week. <laughs> I'll fire and damnation, no matter what. I almost gave him a big kiss today, <laughs> but I didn't do that either. Um, but I, I just like to get people to work together. And the, the, the real, uh, the real uh, success of Bastards and to come here was a great team effort, just a great team effort. And some of the members of the team were here, they've been recognized here earlier tonight. And I had the privilege of, of working with them. And there's some folks who were very helpful in that process that aren't here tonight. They included our, uh, our delegation, our congressional delegation, Senator Biden and Congressman Castle and, and uh, Senator Rock, who were all terrific. Other business leaders were, were great. Uh, we had uh, just Tom Kilk from, uh, from, uh, uh, from, uh, from AstraZeneca from, from, from Europe. Tom Kilk, he was just great. Came in the secret meeting. We had a secret meeting down at the riverfront that not many people ever know about. In fact, probably most people in this room don't know about. But uh, I brought in by the then CEO of uh, Zeneca. Arranged for it, we sat and had just a wonderful visit. I think it was very helpful to get us to where we needed to, to be in all of this. So, and in any event, it's, a, it's just a wonderful outcome. The other thing is, it, I've been spending time today in, in Washington trying to work with people on the White House task force on future General Motors and, and 
and then Chrysler, trying to make sure we have a manufacturing presence in the domestic auto industry. We've been working today to try to make sure that we don't do something like credit cards, that while we try to protect consumers, we don't uh, deep six and torpedo the credit card industry, which has a lot of implications for us here in, in Delaware. I still work all the time on economic development issues. I think one of the most important things for government to do is to provide a nurturing environment for job creation and job preservation. We're not supposed to be laptops for business. We're supposed to try and provide a nurturing environment because at the end of the day, I mentioned this the other night at a reception with some of our AstraZeneca friends. At the end of the day, uh, you've got companies that are successful. They are uh, making money. Uh, they are paying taxes. They're hiring people to work uh, coming off of, out of high schools and universities. People coming to work off of welfare roles or unemployment roles. Um, corporations are being a good corporate citizen. If you got all that going for you in my business, in my line of work, the rest is really pretty easy. The rest is really pretty easy. So one of the things that we sought to do here for AstraZeneca was just to demonstrate that this is a nurturing environment and a good place to, to put down your roots and to, to grow a company. And we're delighted that they did that. And I'm grateful to all who helped provide that, that nurturing environment and still do, still do. Uh, we, uh, we set out to, uh, to create, uh, not just to have a wonderful company to go along with the Pond Company and others work and others to, uh, to help make us a, a biotech center, but we wanted to uh, to figure out what is the next big thing for Delaware. It used to be cars, cars, trucks, and vans. We had these huge auto assembly plants that employed 4,000 people at least. It used to be uh, uh, fibers and textiles. We had four or 5,000 people who worked down in, uh, in, uh, in Seaford. Uh, it, uh, it used to be uh, uh, banking, and still is. We still have a huge financial, but everybody's always looking for the next big thing. And we got the idea in the late 1990s, the next big thing ought to be biotech. And we ought to position ourselves to, to, to do that. I don't know that there is going to be a next big thing. I don't know that there is going to be a next big thing. But I do know this. Uh, there are going to be a bunch of things and a bunch of uh, steps that we can take to create a nursing environment, whether it's biotech, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's financial services, whatever it might be. The people from all kinds of business and interests will say, well, that's a place we want to be. That's a place we want to do business. Because we have worked to, to try to provide a, an excellent uh, productive workforce. We've worked to provide really a private place that's, that's lovely. And you can breathe the uh, air and you can drink the water and swim in the oceans and not have to worry about getting sick. A place where we, we have decent housing, good transportation systems, good hospitals, good health care, all of the above and, and more. And that's what we endeavor to do here. Uh, it's a, a job is never complete because the world uh, changes and the nature of our economy changes as well. But uh, for one uh, uh, bright, shiny moment, in the late 1990s, a lot of people came together and uh, really uh, pulled off a, a small, a small miracle. And that the, uh, I thought, I thought I'll close with this. I thought that we were going to be successful when I s received from the Delaware Economic Development Office. And y'all remember this? Uh, they all remember the cover of the uh, proposal that we sent to, to AstraZeneca. On the cover of the proposal we sent to AstraZeneca was a. a Beautiful color photograph of the Calmar Nickel, the Delaware ship, our, our traveling ambassador, our ship that sails all over the, all over the world, really. And uh, in full sail with an American flag and a Swedish flag. And that's what we presented to, uh, to our friends from AstraZeneca. And uh, CG from Sweden took a look at that. And I think he saw in, in us a place that did know how to provide a nurse.